Hello everybody, Flick here, it's time for yet another Let's Look At and today we are looking at Chuck's Challenge 3D, a rather weirdly named game. This will be going up the day before it's released on Steam and there will be a link in the description box below to it, to the store page. There's no price listed yet so unfortunately I won't be able to give you one of those but check on the, when is it, the 27th or 28th and you will see for yourself how much it is. This is a puzzle game, I would say it gives off the aesthetic and the general theme in terms of difficulty and whatnot that it's aimed at the younger audience, although some of the challenges have had me stumped later on anyway, so... But to set up the story anyway, I don't want to show off too many of the story related elements but we can go into play here. Well, I guess I can first of all show off what's in the game anyway. We have these different areas and very typical cut the rope, angry birds, that kind of fashion. It is a mobile game as well, so it has that those features. So the world are broken up into these monsters, I guess. So I've completed all of Ashida and I've started on Bibinka and that took me just over an hour to do 25 stages in the Shida and 8 stages in Bibinka. And then there's also three other worlds of 25 stages each and there's a medal system on each stage as well to encourage replayability. So there is a lot here for what you get in terms of out the box. I assume down the line there may be more worlds added in you know, typical fashion to those mobile games I just mentioned. So this is all I've done so far in the first world. I'm not sure if I want to go right back to the start. I do find that for like the first half of the, uh, the Shida world it's really, really too simple. It, it treats you a bit like an idiot, but maybe if, if it's aimed at children, that might be why. I don't mean that to sound insulting either. Okay, we'll, we'll set up the story by going to number one. It should play a cutscene here, yep. So that is Chuck, and he's enjoying a... Well, he was enjoying a drink on the beach, but then suddenly he's teleported away by an alien named... I don't know if that's Wop, because there's no H, so it can't be Whoop. But he brought him there because Chuck is good at building puzzles and he wants challenge. That's essentially the setup here, as they'll be talking about in the background. There's no voice acting, by the way. They kind of make Sim-esque mumbling noises. So there we are, and this is what the basic game looks like when we play. We can turn the camera and such like, and zoom in, zoom out, like so. Oops, sorry, I don't mean to keep on spamming that, but I wanted to get back to how it looks. I'm used to the standard view. So that was Chuck, and this game is made by Chuck Somerville, or Somerville and he actually made a game called Chips Challenge on the Atari Linux in 1989 so I assume that's why he's following the same naming convention although I don't think the naming convention is actually that fitting or good I mean you could call it like WAP the Alien or something like that or WAP's Puzzle Adventure it just it seems a bit egotistical to me so I'm not entirely sure about that so this is setting up the very basics of play I have just to get WAP to the exit each time and then steadily um, enemies are introduced as well as other obstacles, other elements of gameplay. So he likes to play challenges, so he's here, he's kind of kidnapped Chuck against his will. <laughs> kind of, it doesn't really focus too much on that, but he has just abducted a uh, human. And there we go, that's the first stage done, although I did that far too slowly because I was too busy explaining things. We'll go back to the level. I don't want to keep on doing the, the levels in order, because as I say... Oh, is this not letting me press on this? I've had this bug encountered before where for some reason... Ah, because I've started the first stage, it wants to force me to go through all the tutorial, right? I am going to go back to the main menu then and go back into play. Oh, apparently I got a new hat. Goody. Right, let's skip a few stages here so I can at least show off something a bit harder. Um, Something I didn't get gold medal on, perhaps. Let's try this one here. It introduces conveyor belts. And there is a rewind mechanic, so if you screw up, in fact I'll screw up on purpose just to show you here. Look, if I follow that. Oh, I died. I can press backspace and it rewinds and you can do it kind of each step so if I do it there and go right that's me saved although I think using up these retries actually does affect your score so I probably already ruined my chances of getting an amazing score here now these octopus things are moving randomly my bad let's, oh okay you changed randomly there as well ah stop it stop it stop it there we go oh I need those as well to unlock the exit I picked up the magnets there by the way so I can move backwards through these conveyor belts without getting carried. So there we go and that's that one done as well. And once again I will go back to the level select because I want to skip quite far. Oh, it's not letting me press it again because it's still counting as a tutorial. Let's try that again. Let's go to the far end of this stage. Now let's see here. Let's try this one. I remember this one being a little bit complicated. Now what I will say about the game is there's weird spikes in difficulty in that it introduces things that it hasn't actually taught you about and doesn't ever seem to. And I'm kind of okay with that because it means I can learn by myself. Like I didn't know that these blocks floated prior to getting to this stage really, or maybe I did, but either way. 
the point is, I'll show you a prime example actually, a stage that had me stumped for a while because it gave no indication of how I was supposed to open up the exit. Since it was blocked by one of these blue spires here, which I've been taught prior, you pick up these kind of cogs in the bottom left there. If you pick up all of them, the matching blue things blocking the exits open up. So that's fine, I understand that completely. Now I got to a stage which had these blue locks, but had no pick up bowls to get rid of them. And I was kind of just left to my own devices, like, okay, well, there you go, work out how to do it. And I didn't really like that because it didn't teach me about some of the mechanics you require to do the stage. Now I may have already messed this up, but the idea is you want to get both of these without accidentally cutting yourself off from one of the exits. And I think I've actually already done that, so I think I may have to restart if I wanted to do this one on camera. In fact, I'm almost certain I do. Yes, I messed this up because I wasn't paying attention. Let's just quickly restart. Very simple to restart, just going to the menu. By the way, there will be controller support, however, there's a known issue in the build I was sent, which means I have to use the keyboard, although I have absolutely no problem using the keyboard. I'm just using WASD to move, uh, bring up a s menu with escape, and that's about it, really. That's all you need, because it is, I assume, built for smartphones, so you don't really need too many intricate controls. Now, let's see, how did I do this last time? I want to get over here, but I don't want to accidentally use too many blocks so let's do that and let's do the same over here um, I'm still gonna need to waste one aren't I or waste two as the case may be see that's the problem with the, uh, doing puzzle games while trying to think of things to talk about your time with the game etc oh actually I think I have done it this time yeah in that if you're focusing on what you're saying you can't focus as clearly on the puzzles but as with most puzzle games when I cover them I don't like spoiling how to do a lot of the puzzles. Also, why did that not open the doors? Ah, yeah, see, this is a problem I had with this puzzle the first time as well. I've collected all the things that should open up the locks, so why haven't the locks opened? Now, if I remember correctly, the thing I need to do is make a bridge to every section. No, I could have sworn that's what I did last time and that's what made it work. Let's, maybe I need to knock off every block. Yeah, turns out that's what I needed to do. How did, was I supposed to know that? The game didn't show me that that's ever been a thing, that all the blocks have to be knocked off the platform to open up the exits. So that's what I mean by the rather weird spikes in difficulty based on the game not teaching you things you're supposed to use to beat the stage. And now another prime example of that, I want to go to a stage that had me stumped for about 15 minutes. It was rather ridiculous, I'm a bit ashamed of myself that it took me 15 minutes. But that's because the game didn't teach me something I needed to do, and it's actually in the next area, not this one, so we'll just go back. There is also a level editor, by the way. I've never tried that, and I want to try it on camera, because otherwise I would be spoiling too many solutions if I kept on going here. That one. This one. This is a pain. Although I'll do the one before as well, because I actually quite like this mechanic. These are rickety kind of little bridges. When you walk over them once, they collapse, meaning you can't backtrack. So you've got to work out how to get to one of these exits after getting the key, but also collecting all these to open up these barriers. And let's see if I can remember how to do this, and I'm willing to bet I can't, but, you know, we'll, we'll see what happens here. So that works out. You can't you can stand still, by the way. It's as if time freezes when you stand still. It's like if I walked on this now, see? It doesn't collapse. It collapses once you walk off it. So, how am I going to do this? I think I know what I'm doing. If I just go down like this... Cause if, oh, wait, no, I ruined that completely, because I need a way back to one of these, don't I? So, how do I do this? Hmm. Let's restart. I think I messed up. I did do this one. I just did this one about 15 minutes ago as well. So you would think I would remember, but sadly I do not. Because you need at least you need one route per path. So there's one route. One route again. If I go all the way up here, that leaves a bridge there, bridge there, bridge there. That's fine. That's me done it. I made that sound a lot more complicated than it was, I think, but as I say, trying to do puzzles while talking, it's a little on the hard side. Oh, I improved my time, good. And now we'll go to the stage that I have I, I have grievances with. So here we are, it's an ice stage, you're, you're probably very familiar with these. Sorry about the very abrupt break there in the middle of what I was saying. My phone went off, so I had to cut a little bit out. I'm not 100% sure how much I was able to keep, but I believe I was just about to start talking about the stage that was driving me a little bit mad. So, you're probably familiar with sliding puzzles. You know, Mario games do it, Pokemon does it, everything does it. It's a very puzzle game-esque trope to have this kind of level. So I understood what I was to do in theory, but if we look in the bottom right here, there's one of those barrier things. So does that mean that there's a power-up hidden in the stage somewhere? 
I have no idea. I'm still not 100% sure how I did this the way I did it. So I spent a long time kind of just bouncing around these cubes, seeing what could happen. You can kind of get stuck and die like that if you want. <laughs> we'll reverse that. So after a lot of experimentation, the thing I found is that the rock in the in the center down here, you can actually move it. So you have to move it to the side, and then for some reason that opens up the the door. And I have no idea why. I mean, the stage is called Musical Chairs, so that kind of implies what you have to do. Maybe that's part of the challenge on purpose. But there's giving direction, and then there's you know giving so little direction that you're not 100% sure what the hell you're supposed to do because. I spent ages just kind of shoving these blocks around randomly thinking, oh, maybe I have to move it onto these blocks with the weird shapes on them. Like that. Maybe. Sometimes if I hit them, it makes a little ding noise. It implies that I've done something right. But I wasn't given enough guidance on the overall theme. So I'm not going to sit here and try and do the stage again, because honestly, it, fr it frustrated me a little bit. So if we go back to level select here. I will do one stage I've not done. I've kind of gone up to this one here. That was the last one I did before recording. Yep. We'll do one I've never done before, it looks like it involves a lot of conveyor belts, then I'll have a little look at the level editor. There's also a daily challenge, however, I've not gone into it yet, because this is pre-release, so I imagine that there's nothing there yet, but we can have a little look at that as well, maybe? Oh, okay, this is a very, um, whoop. Alright, that was easy enough, but now I need to get onto the outer barrier, like that. Oh, oh. Oh, and you, okay. <laughs> that was very lucky. See, I'm having to watch the. Oh, right, they go in sets of two. Oh, no. Uh oh. Yeah, I thought that was going to catch me, sadly. So we go back here and go, whoop. No. Where was the point I got to there? What I meant to do was up. There we go. As long as I'm chasing the blocks. Hey, that wasn't too bad. It's pretty good, in fact. Let's have a quick look at the next one as well. Might as well. I was kind of hoping we would see another one of Chuck's shirts on the stage because when you do that you get little adorable back and forth between them. Whoop calls him a, a monkey man and Chuck keeps on asking for food and he keeps on getting given beetroot for some reason. So it looks like you have to make a path to one of the portals. Any one you want. Whichever one you pick it would basically be the same either way. So that would involve getting behind these. So how the hell would you supposed to do that? Hmm. Another thing is sometimes you can push more than one block and sometimes you can't. I'm not 100% sure what dictates whether or not you're able to do it. But I'm sure you get the general gist. We could go like that and then we'd go like that and I'm not 100% sure what would give me enough. I think I shouldn't have done that last shove just before this one because I need one more block. Yep. But you can see if I hadn't done that last shove there I would have been able to push this one up and that would have done it. So we'll go back to the home menu. Yep. What hat did I get? I haven't actually looked at this. Give me a hat please. I've got no hat. Oh, I've got a top hat. I've got a top hat. That's it. Well, yeah, I don't mind looking rather gentlemanly. Um, there's, let's have a look at the wiki, weekly puzzle. See if there is actually any in here yet. There is no weekly puzzle for this week. Yep, I didn't think so because the game's not out yet. So that makes total sense. Uh, let's go to create and have a little look at this. This is my first time seeing this. I've mostly been spending the time with the puzzles themselves. So we're given a... What is that? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10... What is that? 11 by 11? Or whatever. And how do we place things? No, that's the eraser, I would assume. Ah, here we go. So we can place starting positions, we can place locks, we can place different types of enemies. Let's try, what is that, war hazard? So, oh, right, that actually just cuts away parts of stages. Okay, so we could do that, and then, I don't know, have like a hazard there in the shape of an H, a backwards H for some reason. And then we could do broken bridges like that, like so. I'd like to pretend I know what I'm doing, but I am basically just uh, you know just <laughs> doing whatever a bomb a key okay so if I put a key there and then I can block it off with uh, one of those dailies oh wait no that's the thing you pick up I want the thing that locks until you pick those up which is I don't actually see that in this list that's the thing you pick up that's the portal out that's a exit. So I could put the exit here, for instance. And I could put... Oh wait, is that it? That's the one! Okay, here we go. We're, it, it automatically assigned it, I guess. And if we put a blue key there, and then we put blue key there, blue key there, blue key there. And then we need some power-ups to pick up, so we could do some of these guys. 
So we could do that. And then we can do one there, one there. One there, one there. Just because, why not? I don't even know if this is doable. I don't know if you need one blue key per block. But we can give it a go in a second. Then we'll put in some enemies. A lot of these enemies I haven't actually ran into. But these octopus things are the ones that just move around randomly. So let's try that. And let's have... Oh, we need a starting position for warp, don't we? So let's do that there. Can, can I turn the direction you're facing? No? Okay. Uh, can I play it? I totally can. Oh, and I'm wearing a top hat now. Lovely. Why did that... That enemy up there disappeared. Did he just fall into the water? Huh. Well, let's see if this stage I made is doable. It may not be. Now, there we go. So now I just do this and do this. There, I made a simple stage. I improved my time, even though I technically haven't done it before. So if we go back, they'll go back into the editor, I assume. Yeah, that's really nice. Simple. I don't think you can make it any bigger than this, or can you? Oh, you totally can. I'm talking rubbish. So there you go. You can make it quite sizable, in fact. So if you wanted to make something really intricate, it looks like you can. And you do have a fair selection of... What's that? Conveyor belts? That's a teleporter that affects the direction you enter from. And uh, those are pins that drop down when you hit those switches. So if I did like that, they drop when you touch. Oh wait, no, that's elevated or not elevated. Hmm. Well, either way, there's a lot of obstacles to choose from. And let's go back to the home menu here. Are you sure you want to leave the editor? Yeah, I don't think that creation is warranted searching the world. So I assume you can search for stages other, people's have, other people have made. I believe there's also a competitive element to the game, just being other people's scores. Perhaps your friends list on Steam, I'm not sure. But anyway, it's a bit of a short look at, but with puzzle games I never spend too much time with them because I quite frankly don't want to solve the game for you. If you don't mind the cute style, or perhaps if you have a kid of your own who is interested in this kind of puzzle games, there's no microtransactions as far as I can see. It's all very light hard. Difficulty spikes are the only real concern I have, and perhaps the name not entirely being good enough. That, but again, that is personal preference speaking here. Uh, if we jump into... yeah, we'll, we'll do a little bit more of the story. I'll just talk to, talk to the shirt here, as it were. I decided to come back. Yes, I did. How could I resist? I had so much fun. I've been busy back on Earth designing more levels. Want to try them out? And of course he does, because he's weird. And there we are. And I'm not going to solve this one. Although, you can have a little look at it, and if you work it out for yourself, all, all the power to you. So this was Chuck's Challenge 3D, by the same gent who made, uh, what was it called, Chips Challenge in 1989, on a console I not even I played. I think my first console was the Atari, the home console, or was that Lin the Linux? I can't remember now. I don't remember playing the game anyway. But still, it was published by Nikdu Games, I think that's how you pronounce that. Again, I'm not 100% sure, unfortunately. It is available on the 28th, yes, the 28th. So it'll be the day after this video goes live. Feel free to check it out and you will see your local regional pricing if you do that in the link to the Steam store in the description box below. So, I'm going to wrap up here. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you had fun. If this is your kind of game, I do recommend it from a puzzle perspective, even if the cute graphical style isn't to my personal preference. I have been challenged by some of the puzzles, and I don't just mean the ones where it's not been 100% clear what I'm supposed to do. I've gotten to a few puzzles where it's 100% clear what I'm to do, but you still have to do a little bit of thinking, and I felt taxed, which is in a good way. I mean that complimentarily. Complimentary? What did I just say there? It doesn't matter. I'm finishing up here. Thank you very much for watching. My name has been Flick. Stay tuned for more gaming stuff, and ta-ta for now.